Hello everyone. So when I made this project Saturday, I, last Saturday, I re, this is for the fourth art Saturday and it was um, for character. And I had in my mind what I wanted to do with it, but of course there's not time in a hop video to do that. So I thought I'd come on today, uh, show you what I'm going to actually do with this project and give you a little idea on how you can um, sometimes use some of your projects to do something different. So what I have is I have my fourth art Saturday project and I did not glue down my um, sign. And there's a reason I didn't do that because I'm not sure exactly where it's going to go. Um, once I get the journal made, because I'm going to make a little journal, then I'll know more about where I want to put it. I did coat this entire thing with Mod Podge uh, collage mixture that I use, the Mod Podge glue mixture, so that my uh, caricature would stay down real well. So I have this. I have multiple jelly prints, not necessarily finished art pieces, but jelly prints. Now, I, these are all made on... Um, just a minute, let me pull this out from under here so you can see. It makes a little more sense when it's white. This is legal size copy paper. And the reason I use it is because I just love the size and I have lots of it. So it's not something special. It's just copy paper. It's just, instead of being eight and a half by 11, it's eight and a half by 14, I think is what it is. Um, and I usually get it at the, uh, printers because they'll have it cheap and sometimes it's a little heavier than others this is just ba basic copy weight paper weight but I have all of my jelly prints that I have done on that paper okay and then I have this giant envelope and by giant let's see I'll measure it It is 10 by 13, so it's really big. Um, it's actually going to be too big, and I'm going to cut it down a little bit, but that's okay. Uh, the deal is I am going to put this on the envelope as the cover of my journal. Then I want to use these as the pages. Well, if I fold this journal in half, my pages are, are a little too long, so I can trim my jelly prints. Not a problem to trim my jelly prints. But then the journal's too tall. So I have been playing. Of course, you know, I always take something and figure it out. Uh, I'm going to cut off part of the bottom of this envelope so that I can use this envelope to make my little journal. This is going to be a little notebooky type journal thing. And um, I will reseal the bottom of the envelope and make it so these pockets function because I think it should. And uh, that's where we're headed with this. Okay. So what we're going to do is figure out how tall we need this envelope. Now, this is eight and a half wide. If we cut this off at eight and a half, it's going to be, you know, that there won't have any extra room or any extra place. So we're going to give this eight and three quarters. So I want to make this envelope eight and three quarters inches tall. But remember, what we want to cut off is the bottom, not the top, just the bottom. Um, simply because I'm going to use this flap, right? So I'm going to look at this. Eight and three quarters. Basically, I'm going to cut off about an inch and a quarter. Okay. <clears throat> 
paper trimmer's not big enough, so we're going to fold it in half, since we're folding it in half anyways. Okay, now again, let's make sure we cut off the bottom, not the top. Now we're going to cut this down to eight and three quarters. It's kind of thick right there. I'm going to have to use my scissors, I guess. All right. There's one little strand. There we go. It was cut, just not very well. Okay, now I'm going to open this bottom flap up and put some glue right here along the bottom edge. And I'm just going to use my art glitter glue. I already know that I'm going to wrap over this edge. It will help to add weight to the bottom and um, make it even more durable. But for the moment, all I really want to do is just seal this bottom edge up as if it were the bottom edge of an envelope. Now, why am I using an envelope that's too big? I have them. I might, I might have a, a smaller envelope somewhere, but I have a bunch of these that once again I got at a discounted price because of going to the paper store. Now we have this. Okay. And what I'm going to do is... I want to put my lady on the front of the envelope. I need to make a line so that I know where to put this. Okay, is that going to mean that I missed the lady's head? Yep. See here? What I'm doing is I'm making sure she fits on the front of my envelope. So. Okay. So basically, I'm going to Mod Podge this down upside down so that I get it all Mod Podged on. And I'm just going to do this kind of, I know it looks backwards, but it will be easier to get it stuck completely. And if you noticed, I've opened the flap. Some of this will go on the flap. Later, I will turn this up like this and it will help to, again, seal that bottom edge. It took a while to figure this out because I knew what I wanted, but it wasn't 
something that just I'd done before. So we are going to put a whole bunch of Mod Podge on here. And just spread it around. Now you could use some other kind of glue or something like that. One of the reasons I want to use my collage mixture, and by the way, guys, um, the collage mixture video, let me just put it right up there, um, will, I'll put it, I'll put a link to it. I use a mixture of Mod Podge and Elmer's Glue All. It is not school glue. It is not straight Mod Podge. And the reason for that is for some unknown reason, the glue all makes it so that the Mod Podge does not seem to do that stick thing where all of the pages in your art journal stick together. The Elmer's glue all seems to eliminate that problem. Okay, so we have it like that, and we are going to burnish it from the middle out. You know, I must have slid it down, or it must have, um, I must not have measured very well. It's all right. It will be okay. Okay, so now we want to do this multiple times. Make sure you get this burnished down real well. I'm trying to be really careful with my squeegee thing. Credit card would work. This happens to be a frosting you know, for cake decorating. Um, because I don't want glue on it to get all over the back. Okay, so. Now we've got that all burnished down like so. And I'm going to lay this aside and let it get dry while we cut our pages. But I gotta clean that up. Okay. Now, this is we measured it's 13 and my paper is 14 so I can either cut off both edges or I can cut off one edge one of the things about cutting off one edge is it gives me a one inch strip to do something else with and I don't mind these because I think it's kind of fun to have, see the edges of it and you're going to see the top and bottom edge anyways so I am just going to cut all of these pages a little smaller. If this is 13, when we fold it in half, a quarter of inch not quite enough, we're probably going to want to cut it down to about 12 and a half inches. Otherwise, the pages, when you fold them and turn them into a signature, they'll stick out too far. And we don't want them sticking out past the edge. So we're going to cut these all down to 12 and a half inches.
Okay, so I um, I cut 10 sheets. Uh, that's going to make a nice fluffy little journal. That's I didn't want it huge. Um, it's only going to be a single signature. And you get more than 8 to 10 sheets of paper, even copy paper, uh, and it gets um, too much. The creep right here is what I was talking about. That's why I cut the pages when this is 13, why I cut them at 12 and a half, because as you see, they fit in real nice, but the center ones are still protected by the edge of the um, cover. So my signature is ready, and I had thought I would be able to cut two or three of those at a time, ha ha ha. Instead, I had to uh, cut them one end at a time because the uh, my the paint had made them where they were not uh, quite so, what shall I say? They were a little bit wiggly. <laughs> they weren't flat. So now what we're going to do is we're going to cut around this um, flap on here. And I'm going to just cut around the flap at the moment because I want to cut off some of this. I'm going to fold some of this over the edge just to make the edges of everything much more sturdy. Now we're going to trim off these corners just a little bit. I want some of it there, but I don't want all of it. I don't want to add that much bulk. And at this point, now the score tape is right along the envelope edge, but this is wider. So what I'm going to do now is I am going to use my art glitter glue. And first we're going to do these little corners. And I'm going to fold it in like so, being careful not to um, pinch the corner of the envelope. Okay.
All right. Now we're going to do the bottom edge, and I'm going to just run one little line of art glitter glue along the very edge. See, the score tape will hold it for the most part, but the glue is going to take care of the very edge. Okay, and on this, I'm just going to put just a tiny bit on there. And then I'm going to go like this, and from the middle out, I'm going to just push it up. Now, our next step needs to be to deal with the flap. Um, this has got glue on it, and we need to have something that covers up with that glue. Now, we have a the outside, the cover, um, is going to strengthen that fold, but we also it's going to take a lot of abuse. So what I want to do is I want to put a piece of my um, jelly printed paper on the inside of this flap and I will tuck it down so that it makes the inside pretty. And so let's pick one. Nicely. And here's this, my secret to this is I get it in there and then I trim it off. Okay, so I don't try to cut it to the exact size. I just try to make sure that it's going to fit. Now we know that this is too long. So I'm going to cut it off. And we're going to just kind of cut off the... And now we need to just make it fit in there. It just has to go in that little envelope. And sometimes this process seems more tedious than it's worth, but it's it's really it really makes a difference when you're using an envelope to make a a, a cover. Okay. So now see, it's tucked into there, it will tuck right in, and it sticks out past the, the lip over here. So my thing is, what I do is I only put glue, I put glue on this strategically. That's what I'm going to tell you. I'm going to glue this edge because we need to have it glued down inside of there. Tuck it in on both ends, and I'm going to push it down. And it's 
glued at the very bottom, but it's not glued here. So now this is this glue is really strong, so it doesn't need to be everywhere. I just run a little bit in there. I run along the edges of the fold. It doesn't have to have a ton. A little more here. And now I very carefully make sure that I get this along the edge. Okay. That's what really matters right now is the edge because the bottom edge is already glued in. And we're just going to get this top edge glued in up here. to trim this off. We're almost done. We need to fold this down right along where the fold line was, which is right there. Ah, I did get it up just a little high. Her her hair is is you know gonna be almost off the the page. That's all right. Okay. So we have that. It's folded down and now our flap is really cute like so. But when I put the pages in, we need to have this cut right here. So what we're going to do is we're going to fold the journal in half like it will be. and half. There's our journal. <clears throat> I like this edge of my flap to match that edge of my flap. So I take another one of the envelopes like so. I just line it up with the edge right here. And I'm going to draw on it just so you can see it. I usually just cut it. And we have our journal cover. How about that? Now, I have my little princess sign. And I wasn't sure where I wanted to put it. But now I know I'm going to put it right there. So I'm going to go ahead and glue that on. Remember, we were making a caricature. So, you know. I had to do something uh, collage and I really like how she came out. The other thing is, is I think she needs some ink around the edges of her, um, of the journal. So I'm going to take my black ink pad and, um, grunge down the edges a little bit just because I think it should.
Okay, now we now have to put our our um our pages in and we'll be all done. So let's see here. How do I want to put these in? I think. For the moment. Oh, okay. Get in there. Oh yeah. I really like it. Like it, like it, like it. Okay, we need This is, for those of you that don't know, a centering ruler. It has a zero in the middle and it counts out from one on each side, two on each side, three on each side. This one's in inches. Um, I use it a lot. What you do is you find the same measurement on each side. This happens to be four and three eighths. And I'm gonna do a five hole pamphlet stitch. So I'm gonna start at zero, two, two, and knowing these aren't quite as wide, I'm gonna go three and three quarters. Okay, so I have to do the same thing to these. And these are four and a quarter, so this is not going to show up. I'm going to have to test something else. And I put it at the same exact place. I'm going to use about three links. I hate being short on um, thread. This is wax linen. And I like to try to remember to get my um, thread fixed before I start sewing. Or punching holes, rather. Because... That way I can keep hold of my signature and not have to let it go to thread the needle. So now I'm just going to punch holes first in the, and I do not usually try to do the cover and the um, signature at the same time. I find that I cannot hold that much together. and clips don't seem to work for me. So if you can do it all in one step, that's awesome. And I always protect my work surface with some kind of book.
Sorry, you can't see me punching the holes. So it's just. Ten sheets is quite a few. Now, another, another little trick is that if you take your um, punchy tool and put it back in the middle hole for the moment, you can move things out of the way. Pick up your, I'm going to put them in this way, I think. Um, pick up your uh, cover and your signature and then pick up your needle. So it just is one of those things that makes it easier to hold on to for me. And I'm going to go out through the middle. Now I punched five holes. So you go out through the middle, back in through the second hole. Out through the outside, the last hole. Now here's an option, and I'm going to tell you why I do it. I happen to like to wrap these around this spot, so I will come around the cover and back through this hole. The reason I do that is it seems to hold these little edges better, and I just I just think that it. It looks nicer, it seems to lay in place better, and for me it seems to hold up better. Okay, so I've gone around and I've gone back out through that hole, which means then I'll come in through the second one down. You do want to be careful not to split your threads when you come back through a hole that's already got a thread in it. back out through the center and I just let everything shift so it's going to be a bugger excuse me apologize okay now we have to go in through the hole down here Like I said, oh, it went in with pretty good. I was afraid the way I let it shift, it was going to cause trouble. And out through the bottom one. Yeah, it is. Okay. And then once again, I'm going to wrap around the bottom and go back through this hole. So it's not quite a standard five-hole pamphlet stitch. It's, it's kind of my version of it. And back in through the second hole. Sometimes I have to open the signature or close the signature up and look where my needle is and get it to go in the hole. There we go. Now, we're going to snug all these up. Pull, pull. We're going to make sure that we've got nice snug threads on the outside. And then here's the tricky part because we don't have this long thread in the middle to separate our threads so I just put my needle under you can't even see it there is a just a minute let me bring in I can do that okay so here's one thread that's the first one when we went out and here's my needle and I've come out of this hole so what I do is I put it underneath that thread right there. Snug everything up. And this is where we're going to tie our knot. Okay. Okay, now the next thing we do is we go back underneath some of these threads so that we end up in, encasing the threads or, or using those threads to keep our knot. You 
in place. And now I just tie it a couple of times. Wax linen is really good for not uncoming, coming undone. So I just cut, tie it a couple of times and clip it off. And we have finished our cool little journal. I really, oh, I guess you would like to see it, wouldn't you? <laughs> and this is the Princess of Creativity. And it's her little journal. Um, it's great to, you know, make notes in. You can pop things into the pockets. There's some fun papers. You could write on it. You could art on these. hope that this was a fun project. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to check out the fourth art Saturday video hop. I will put the link right up there. Um, it was a lot of fun doing this and all the other videos. I am sure I'm, you know, I'm making this now before I get to see the videos. So, um, I'm, I'm sure they're going to be fabulous. They always are. Every fourth art Saturday is a fabulous project. So, guys, go have fun. Make some art. Bye-bye.